唱唱这个歌，见潘查塔法的时候。Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Gaya Karamore. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. Dayakaramahore, Toma Bina Kedayalu, Jagata Samsahare. Toma bina ke dayalu jagata samsare. Pati ta pavana hetu. Tava Vatara Patita Vanahetu Tava Vatara Mosa mo pati ta prabhu na pae be ahara. Mosa mo pati ta prabhu. Napae beyara Ha ha prabhu nityananda Kremananda suki Aha Prabhu Nityananda Premananda Sukhi Kripa Bhalo Kanda Koro Ami bara duki. Kripa bolo kana koro. Ami bara duki. Kaya karo sita pati adwaita gasai. Kaya karo sita pati. 
जाए गौर हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो निचाय गौर हरि भो मनंदे हरि बो ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोतम दीं सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीराय नारायण नस्त्रायद्रेश नित्यम भागवत सेवाया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी We're reading Shrimad Bhagavatam. Uh, we're on fourth canto, chapter number twenty-four, chanting the song sung by Lord Shiva. And today we're on the last verse of this chapter, text number seventy-nine. Gitam, Maidam. नरदेवा नंदना गीता मैदम नरदेवा नंदना गीता मैदम नरदेवा नंदना परशिया पुंसा परमात्मना स्तव परश्य पुंसा परमात्मना स्तव परश्य पुंसा परमात्मना स्तव जपंत एकाग्र दियास तपो महात जपंत जपंत एकाग्र दियास तपो महात जपंत एकाग्र दियास तपो महात चरद्व अंत तथा अपश्यतिद चरद्व अंत तथा अपसयापेपित चरद्व अंत तथा आपस्यत गीता मैदम नरदेवनंदना परश्य पुंसा परमात्मनास्तव जपंत एक आग्र दियापो महात 
Chara dvam ante tata apsatep setam. Gitam maedam naradeva nandana. Parashya pumsa paramatmanastavam. Japanta eka gradiasta po mahat. Charadvam ante tata apsatep sitam.
Very good. Gitam sang Maya by me. Idam this Naradeva Nandana. O sons of the king, Parashya of the supreme, Pumsaha. Personality of Godhead, Parama Atmana, the Super Soul of everyone, Stavam, prayer, Japanta, chanting, Eka Agra, perfect attention. Diya, intelligence, tapa, austerities, mahat, great, charadvam, you practice, ante, at the end, tata, thereafter, apsyata, will achieve, achieve. ipsitam, the desired result. Translation. My dear sons of the king, the prayer I have recited to you are meant for pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Super Soul. I advise you to recite these prayers which are as effective as great austerities. In this way, when you are mature, your life will be successful and you will certainly achieve all your desired objectives without fail. Zhongwen. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, if we persistently engage in devotional service, certainly all our desires will be fulfilled in due course of time. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the fourth canto, twenty-fourth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Chanting the Song Sung by Lord Shiva. Jongwen. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so Lord Shiva had been instructing the sons of the king. These sons of the king were called the Prachetas and the king was King, king Prachini Barishat. He was described in the fourth canto here. If you read through the fourth canto you can hear about this king 
and about his sons, the prachetas. So the prachetas actually they'd gone to do austerity. They were going to get married, but the system was that before marriage they first go to do tapasya, go to do some austerity. Nowadays if you ask a young man before marriage to go and do some austerity, they'll laugh at you. You say, you must be joking. But actually the Vedic culture is like that, that before entering into householder life, taking on the responsibility of a family, the man should first of all do some austerity, do some tapas. And if there are some countries, they still do it, like if you go to Thailand, Thailand is a Buddhist country and many people before the marriage the man will become a monk. He'll go and live in the monastery as a monk for a period of a few months or so and then after he's been in the monastery for a few months he'll come back home and then he'll get married. This is acceptable. We encourage Young, we should encourage people also in Krishna consciousness, come and live in the temple and do some sadhana, do spiritual practice. And in this way you'll be qualified to take on the responsibility of family life. So this king uh, rather, Lord Shiva is saying to the prachetas, he said, these prayers which you recite, if you recite these prayers, it will be just as good as doing any austerity. You don't need to do any great austerity. Some people will do austerities, they'll go to the mountains, and they'll live in the cave in the mountains, fasting for some time. And they'll bathe in the, in the winter time, they'll bathe in the ice cold water. And in the summer, they'll sit in the hot sun and they'll build, build a fire around them. And they'll sit around blazing fires under the hot sun meditate. So they'll do these kind of tapasyas like fasting as well. But Lord Shiva said, you can just recite these prayers. If you offer these prayers, you'll get the same benefit as doing any great austerity. Lord Shiva said, these prayers are meant for pleasing the Supreme Lord. But we have to understand we should not recite the prayers mechanically. You should recite them with attention. It's mentioned in the verse, perfect attention, eka agra, eka agra, perfect attention. So we should recite the prayers, when we offer our prayers, it's a meditation and we have to fix the mind on concentrating the, on the prayers. Just like when we sing these songs every morning, when we sing Guru Vastikam and when we sing the prayer worshipping Prabhupada, Guru Puja, it's important for us that we know the meaning of these songs. When we know the meaning of the songs, then it will have some value, it will, have, it will be beneficial for us. But if we don't know the meaning, then there's no benefit. You don't understand what you're singing. So it's important for us, 
Prabhupada said, you must know when we sing these songs, we must know what they mean. And offering prayers is one of the nine kinds of devotional service, right? N devotional service has nine different forms. It begins with hearing and chanting. So first we hear and then we chant, we, we hear and we repeat, we chant what we've heard. And when we do hearing and chanting properly, then we will remember. Smaranam comes. People want to do meditation. Meditation is actually smaranam. But if you're going to do meditation, you want to meditate, you have to first of all hear and you have to chant. And then you have something to fix your mind on. Then you have something to remember. If you have not heard and chanted properly, you won't be able to remember. So it's important for us that we put a lot of energy into hearing and chanting. And then we can go on to the other kinds of bhakti yoga like smaranam, remembering. And then after remembering, shravanam, kirtan, smaranam, then padasevanam, worshipping the lotus feet of the Lord. Padasevanam. Worshipping the lotus feet is done by, of course, Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, that she's always serving the Lord's lotus feet. And we also can do Pada Sevanam when we go to visit holy places. Going to visit the holy places and performing the Parikrama in the holy places, that is a form of Pada Sevana. And we can also do Pada Sevana by worshipping the Lord's pure devotee. Just like when we worship Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, we say, He is Prabhupada, He is situated at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Right? One who is at the feet of the Supreme Prabhu. Prabhu is, can mean, it can mean different things. It can mean Lord Krishna. So Prabhupada can mean one who is situated at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So by worshipping Srila Prabhupada, we're also worshipping Lord Krishna's lotus feet because Prabhupada has taken shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So Padasevanam and then Archanam, temple worship. Archanam, offering the deities, arti, offering worship to the deities. This is also recommended for people in Grihastha life, that they should worship the deity. Why? Particularly in family life, because when we are Grihasthas, we become very attached to our home. We like to be in the home. So when you put the deity there, then the, ho the home becomes the property of the deity. The deity is not just there, but the deity is the proprietor of the home. You bring Krishna into your home, he becomes the proprietor of your home. And we worship the Lord in that manner. So for householders, it's very much recommended to worship a deity. And the best, the easiest type of deity to worship is Gornitai. Lord Jagannath is more strict. And Radha and Krishna, they're the most strict. 
you have to worship them very carefully. So Srila Prabhupada recommends worship of Gorni Thai as very easy for people. It's, it, Prabhupada said Gorni Thai can be worshipped just simply by kirtan. Of course, not every home will do kirtan. You know, some of you have a husband who may not be a devotee. So, so you know, you do kirtan, you can't do it when your husband's around. <laughs> it's difficult. But if you're fortunate and you have a devotee husband, and your children, you, the whole family can do kirtan together. That's very nice. So, but kirtan, Gornitai are very merciful, you can worship them by kirtan. But we can also worship them by dressing them regularly. Means just like we ourselves, we don't just bathe once a week, we bathe every day. So when you have deities, you're meant to worship them every day. You bring a deity to your home, it's a responsibility. You have to worship very carefully. You have to be regular. And you have to do it when you're clean. Now women, every month, of course, they have their menstruation cycle, they're not clean. At that time, it's not proper to worship the deity. We generally say when the woman is in that period, we say she is off the altar. Means she cannot go on the altar at that time because she's not clean. So at that time, she should not even cook because cooking, to cook, you're cooking for the deities. Whatever you cook at home, you should offer to the deity. You have a deity at home, whatever you cook, you should offer it to the deity. But if you're not clean, then your food is not very clean and you, want, you can't really offer it to the deity. Usually what will happen is at that time the husband will cook. The husband should cook and the wife will rest during that time. She would simply rest and she can chant and she can read the books, she can go to temple and she can do these things, but she cannot worship the deity. So worshiping the deity is there for grihastas and for others also, brahmacharis also take part in deity worship, vanaprastas, sannyasis, we all take part in the deity worship. But particularly for householders, they can bring the deity to their home and that way become more Krishna conscious instead of just being conscious of the family. So when you have a deity, then you want to also offer prayers. Vandana is also recommended when we come in front of the deities, we should offer some prayers. Now, these prayers are best learned from other devotees, great devotees. They have given us many different prayers which we can recite. In the Bhagavad Gita, you have prayers. You have Arjuna offering prayers to Krishna. Arjuna is offering prayers to Krishna and you, we can recite these kind of prayers. There are many prayers in the Srimad Bhagavatam. We have the prayers by Queen Kunti in the first canto and then in the second can canto you have Sukadeva Goswami offering prayers when he is asked to speak about creation and you have also uh, 
we're, we're just hearing this song chanted by Lord Shiva. This is also a prayer. So the, the Bhagavatam is full of prayers. There's Gajendra's prayers. You have uh, Dhruva Maharaj's prayers. You have the Brahmana from Avanti Desh, his prayer. If you go through the Bhagavatam, there's many, many different sections where there are prayers. And we are encouraged to recite these prayers. We often recite, for example, Brahma Samhita. When we greet the deities every morning, we are reciting, we are hearing the recording anyway, Yamuna Mataji is singing the Govinda prayers, two verses, just two verses from the, Go, Go, from the Brahma Samhita. But there are many, many other verses and we can recite also these prayers. We recite also the Shikshastikam prayers every day, every morning. That's minimum. We could recite many more prayers, but at least we recite Shikshastikam. So Lord Chaitanya has given us the Shikshastikam. Everyone should be familiar with the Shikshastikam prayers. We should know the meaning and we should recite the prayers. Then there's the Goswami Astikam. And we can, you can recite the prayers to the Goswamis. And no, when Kartik month comes, then we will sing Damadar Astikam. And we will sing the Damadar song and that is also a prayer. And we should know the meaning of the prayers. Of course, we generally we recite also the meaning of the Damodar prayers. So it's very nice to recite these different prayers. And Lord Shiva is saying that this is as, this is as good as doing any kind of austerity. The Prachetas, they were going to do austerity. But they met Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva taught them this song, taught them this song which he composed, in which he is worshipping the personality of Godhead. Lord Shiva is a great personality. He is a demigod, but he is also a pure devotee. He is the greatest Vaishnava. And he is very kind to the fallen souls. He will go to the crematorium and he will deliver many souls there in the crematorium. He will help them all and even it said that Lord Shiva is so kind, is so merciful that people who have had sex which was not according to religious principles. He will grant, he will arrange for a soul which was a ghost to be placed into the womb of that woman so that that ghost will get a human body. So that is Lord Shiva's kindness on these people. He does these kind of things. He's very merciful. And here, he has been instructing the Prachetas. This is a big chapter, text 79. 79 slokas in this chapter. It's one of the longest chapters in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it, it's many verses from Lord Shiva. He's been teaching the Prachetas how to, how to please the personality of Godhead. So that is the real purpose of devotional service, to give pleasure to the personality of Godhead. And we learn from the Bhagavad Gita how we can please Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna says, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome Bhaktya Prayachati Tadaham Bhakti Uparitam Ashnami Prayatatmana. Ashnami means Krishna said, I eat, I accept what you are offering. 
But he doesn't just want the leaf and the flower and the fruit and the water, but he wants the devotion, he wants the bhakti. So it's very important that we try to give our pure bhakti for the service of Krishna. So pure bhakti means we have to be pure in body and in mind and in consciousness. All these things have to be pure. That will be pleasing to Krishna. All that you eat, yakkaroshi yajasnasi yajjahosi dadasi yat yat tapasyas tu kontiya tat kurushva madhapanam. Lord Krishna is describing in this verse karma yoga. All that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities you may perform, should be done as an offering unto me. So that is not bhakti yoga, but that is karma yoga. Because we're doing things we want to do, like some people want to do austerities. Some people take pleasure in doing austerities and they will announce to people their great austerities. I did this, I fasted, I didn't do, I chanted so many and They will talk about their austerity and then they will offer to Krishna something. But that is karma yoga. You're attached to working in a particular way, but you're giving some of the result to Krishna. Just like people have jobs, they want to work in the job and they will work and they will give some portion of their income to Krishna. They're attached to work. Other people, they're not attached to work. They don't like to work, but they do it for Krishna anyway. That is bhakti. They've surrendered to Krishna and they're, they, they've surrendered in the beginning and then... So bhakti is surrender, first surrender and then give the result. Karma yoga, they, they, they surrender at the end. Now, karma yoga is different from bhakti yoga, but karma yoga is close to bhakti. You do some karma yoga, it will gradually become bhakti as you get purified. So, Srila Prabhupada's purpose said, we have to persistently engage in devotional service. We have to be very persistent. It means constantly, every day, every moment, our devotional service has to be so full that there are no gaps, that we're all the time engaged in Krishna activities, Krishna karma, working for Krishna, eating for Krishna, sleeping for Krishna, everything is done for Krishna's pleasure. We have to think like that, that devotional service should be just like we give the example, they have these shops, they have these, uh, but they have these the 7-Eleven shops, you know, uh, they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They never close. So our devotional service should be like that, right? 24-7, constant, no gaps. Of course, you say, well, I need to take some rest. All right, you take rest, but you don't sleep too much. You don't sleep too li little, you don't sleep too much. It's all for Krishna. I'm taking rest so that I can wake up and do more service, be more active in Krishna's service. 
So we want to practice in this way. And, and Prabhupada said, in this way, all of our desires will be fulfilled in course of time. Now, when we're not mature, when we're immature, we have material desires with different material things we want. But as we become more mature in Krishna consciousness, we will give up these desires. Just like Dhruva Maharaj, when he was a young boy, in the beginning he wanted a kingdom and he went to the forest and he did tapasya and Lord Vishnu came. But then Dhruva had become mature because he'd been chanting, he'd been chanting a mantra and he'd been doing tapasya and he'd been doing meditation, concentrating his mind. And so he lost the desire. He realized he didn't want a kingdom anymore. And the same happened to Gajendra. Gajendra was in the, caught by the crocodile. Gajendra is a big elephant and he was caught by the crocodile. So he was praying, oh, save me, save me. So finally he remembered a prayer which he had learned in the previous life. In his previous life, Gajendra had been Indra Jumna. He'd been a king. And while he was in the body of Indra Jumna, he was worshipping the Lord and he was reciting a prayer. But somehow he got cursed and he had to become an elephant. And then he got caught by the crocodile. But then Lord Vishnu came and Lord Vishnu killed the crocodile. But Gajendra said, hey, why you killed him? I offered the prayer, you should have killed me and let me free of this elephant body. I have to stay, I'm in this dumb body, this big elephant body, it's so terrible. You came and you killed the crocodile, he got free of his body, I'm still in my elephant body, I'm still suffering. I offered the prayer, but he got the mercy. So that, that was what happened to Gajendra, he became mature. Okay, so any question? Yes? Can you, yes, you can come to temple. Shamashot. You, Zaijali. Uh, oh, when the lady is in her menstruation period, I said they shouldn't cook and they shouldn't worship the deity, but you can go to temple. Should I? Lai me okay, Ling Ting Chang Song. You can hear and chant. Ni Kai Chipusada. Ni Bukai So Prasada. You can eat Prasadam, you can't cook Prasada. Krishna 
呃，欣赏他的小腿、大腿，然后他的身体的每一个部位，一直到里面，呃，还有他的手，还有他的手势，是用这样的呃的搭讪，就是。So she is asking, what should be our attitude when we greet the deities every time? Like when they offer the Govinda prayers and they open the curtains and when we see the deities. So what should be our mood? What kind of attitude should we have in receiving the deities? So the attitude should be that the Supreme Lord has come. The personality of Godhead has come. We are receiving Him. We are. We have come to greet Him. This, of course, is His temple, and we have come here to greet Him. So, we can. Of course, when when you hear the Govinda song, then you can meditate on the the words. That he's adapted playing on the flute, with blooming eyes like lotus petals, whose head is bedecked with a peacock feather, whose figure of beauty is tinged with the hue of blue clouds, and whose unique loveliness is charming millions of cupids. Just meditate on the meaning of the song, the translation of the. Usually, when we perform arti, Srila Prabhupada taught us that arti is receiving the Lord. So we are welcoming Him, and we are offering different articles to Him for His pleasure. Just like Krishna would go away, He would leave Dwarka, and when He would come back to Dwarka, then all the people would come to meet Him, and they would offer. So many articles, and they and recite prayers also. You know, Govinda prayers. We are just offering two prayers. You can offer many other prayers. There's so many beautiful prayers, and you can make your own prayer also if you like. You can also have your own prayer. You may like to offer to Krishna, but a prayerful mood. That he is, um, he is our Lord and Master. We are His servants. So that is the main mood. We are here as His tiny servant. Yes, Prabhu. That's a problem. You should have somebody cook, somebody else come and cook, or you get you get food from an. Are you you know she knows that psycho is coming, she can prepare ahead of time. But then also she cannot offer. It's not. This is. It's mentioned. Baladeva Vijayabusan mentions specifically this point in the purport to the verse in the Bhagavad Gita, Patram Pushpam Palam Toya, that if that you have to be conscious of cleanliness, and if the woman is in a contaminated state, she cannot worship the deity properly. So that's why we tell people be very cautious about bringing deities to your home. That's why Prabhupada encouraged Dobo come to temple, <laughs> right? We have a temple here. You come here and worship here, and we can keep up the standard here. But you go, you know, you, you oh no, I have to. I have my own temple at home. Okay, who's going to do all the deity worship? You know, you have to consider. <coughs> but 
But these are the standards, you have, this, uh, these are the very clearly mentioned, these standards are there and we follow these standards. So to, to keep deities at home and you're only one woman there to do the worship is not very good. You have a son, train up the son, let the son start doing it. He's, not, he's already old enough, he could do it. You have to train him. But that should, that's what should happen. Yes? Well, the, the song of Lord Shiva is there in, the, in this chapter. You have to read the, read the chapter. Lord Shiva's been singing the song for many verses. If you go through the chapter, you'll see it's all there in, the, in this chapter. Huh? Shama? Yeah. Yeah, many slokas. It's a big song. But, you know, we're following, we're singing Brahma Samhita, we follow Lord Brahma, right? Brahma's our Adi Guru. So we sing Brahma Samhita. You can sing Lord Shiva's song if you like. Some devotees, some people are very devoted to Lord Shiva. Even Sanatana Goswami, one of the six Goswamis, he was very devoted to Lord Shiva. He used to worship Lord Shiva also. We wish you can worship Lord Shiva to get rid of false ego. Lord Shiva is in charge of ahankar, false ego. So if you're, if you have a, a problem with your ego, you can take shelter of Lord Shiva, pray to Lord Shiva to take away your false ego. But this prayer which Lord Shiva is offering here, this is a prayer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu. So you can, you can recite that prayer. The Brahma Samhita is a prayer to Krishna, Govindam Adipursham Tamaham Bhaja. Any other questions? Okay, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Gaur Premanande. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki.